Hi, my name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a one-third scale arcade cabinet for two players using a Raspberry Pi. I always start my arcade builds by focusing on the monitor, since I kind of build from the inside out. And the monitor is the most critical part that it needs to be sized and measured for the cabinet to fit it and look not stupid as far as ratios and an overly thick bezel and so on. So this is a Dell monitor that I got at a yard sale. It was actually just in a free pile. Most of these Dell monitors or HP monitors, any monitor that was used in the mid-early 2000s, 2010s, are pretty much garbage now. This one has DVI and VGA inputs. The DVI is really the best thing here for the Pi. Now I have to wedge apart the plastic, which is quite the process because every monitor is built differently because we want to get to the raw TFT panel with the metal cage and the attached power supply. So I removed the button board. This is the plastic that's coming off, and I found out that you had to pry it from the front, not the back. So if you get one of these Dell monitors, there you go. And when you've tear it, torn it down this far, make sure it still works. It's good to always check it immediately. So now I'm going to measure the bezel, the overall dimensions, and the window, as well as the thickness of the monitor. Remove some more parts that aren't necessary to this thing, since it's going to go inside an arcade. And um, just be careful of that button assembly, that it doesn't break off or you crush it or cut the ribbon cable. Again, testing things, you know, before you commit to anything, make sure your parts work. Okay, so I'm going to use a tape measure that has millimeters on it. Uh, just be careful if you use any tape measure, the jiggly part will give you your plus or minus error. So these are the measurements that I got. This TFT panel is 362 by 298, and most 17-inch monitors of this ratio, I'm dividing the resolutions, or dividing the interior dimensions, I get a 5 to 4 ratio. Uh, so if you get a 17-inch monitor that is this ratio, there's a good chance that its overall dimensions will be similar to this. So take all these drawings, I start drawing an arcade cabinet. This is the third or fourth one I've built of this size, so I'm just making it look easy. But this is what the 3D model looks like. There's some strategic cuts and holes in places that make certain assembly and access to the arcade and Raspberry Pi simple, and we'll cover those as we build this cabinet. So here's what the resource requirements are as far as wood. It's two-thirds of a four-by-eight sheet of quarter-inch wood and a couple sheets of acrylic, which is all optional. So I cut this on a laser cutter. I don't have a laser cutter, but I have access to one at a maker space that's going out of business. So, you know, anyway... I can't film there, so this is these are the cut pieces, and I'm going to just do a dry assembly so you can get an idea of how this thing goes together. It is pretty self-explanatory, but it is quite the process to film it and glue it at the same time. So take it for this. This is what it looks like when you start clamping it up. I don't have a lot of clamps, so I had to clamp this in stages and series. Either, these are all the stages and series that I had to clamp. So this is a pretty large cabinet for such a thin shell, so we need to reinforce it structurally. Uh, this is some common board that is like two bucks for six feet, and I'm just cutting this to length to line the interior of this thing to give it a skeleton or some bones to reinforce everything. I go glue crazy and again clamp it in stages because I only have so many clamps. And this is what that looks like. All right, so we're measuring the depth of the monitor, and that depth is a little bit different in all the corners, but just good to have it referenced. And I'm using these brackets that I cut out of the same quarter-inch wood, just stacking them till I get the thickness of the monitor. And you can see we're doing a dry fit right here just to make sure before we proceed, everything's going to fit. And luckily, and fortunately, it does. I'm also checking some spaces on the side because I want to add more structural reinforcement. So I'm just getting the area where I might have some interference with some side brackets and cut more pieces of length and glue them in. And this is what that looks like when you glue it. So at this point, let all the glue dry and we can start painting. 
With the cabinet glued and that glue is cured and dried, it's time to do my least favorite part, which is prime sand and paint. Right now I'm using body filler to fill in any gaps and make the finger joints a little bit more uniform. So you have to fill everything, sand this, and repeat it if necessary. This is after one or two sands. It's If it starts to look flush and it feels flush, it's good. This is oil-based primer. I'm just using a bent coat rod or a coat hanger to mix it up. And when you've made a mess, then you know everything is mixed properly. I'm painting some of the parts. This is what the first coat just kind of looks like. I'm using a foam brush to hopefully eliminate brush streaks if you use a bristle one. And I'd usually do about two coats of prime for my arcade cabinets. That's what the back and top look like when prime goes on. It is a fun process. Here's the second coat after the first is dry. Just follow the directions of whatever paint you're using. Again, second coat. After the second coat is dry, sand everything with 200 to 400 grit. Uh, I like to use an orbital, a random orbital sander like this because it's just easier. That's actually what I use on all my sanding. And it goes to the spray booth, which I don't have, but I have a membership at a certain place. So I use just Rust-Oleum spray paint. And I'm going to do three coats of spray paint onto the cabinet. So I'm just spraying the accessory parts. Here's what the first coat looks like when it goes on. It It's uh, it's quite the difference. Once you get this first coat on, it starts to look like an arcade. So I leave at least two to three days for this thing to dry. If it still smells, like if it makes a small room smell like paint, it's not dry. It's still off-gassing. Let it dry. Do not rush this step. Okay, now that we have a finished and painted cabinet, we're gonna start first with a DC-DC step-down regulator. Most of our DC supply is off of 12 volts and we need to drop that down to five volts for the Raspberry Pi. So that's what this is, uh, but make sure if you use one of these, they're usually sold as adjustable and we need to drop it down to about 5.15 volts with a 12, 12 volt supply plugged in. That gets mounted with the barrier strip to the back of the monitor and we're also gonna glue the monitor's controls to the back to, to save some space from the bottom of the cabinet. Next I start with a poster board and cut out my bezel with it. This is kind of a place filler right now because I can put artwork behind it, but most Neo Geo cabinets just have a solid black or solid red LCD bezel. So keeping with tradition, just go with that. These are the monitor brackets that I'm going to install right now and put the two bottom capture tabs in and I'm just securing this with number 8 by 32 hardware. If everything was measured correctly, the monitor should drop down and fit perfectly plus or minus a couple millimeters and you should have plus a couple millimeters tolerance to jiggle things around. Next, I'm going to install our single pole, single throw switches. This is so we can control the Raspberry Pi power, the amplifier power, and the backlight power from the front. These are latching switches, just two of them. One of them I'll use. The other is a spare, but I'm still going to put it in there. And then these momentary buttons are going to be my volume control, all accessible from the front. Put the cover plate on with some nuts and bolts just to clean the seam up between the underneath of the marquee and the top of the monitor. And this little pusher piece will force or help push the clear plastic pieces of the marquee in. The speaker bracket, these are three inch mid-range speakers with a two watt amp mounted in between them. Just common parts you can find on like uh, MCM electronics wiring left and right channels. And then the LED strip gets mounted to the same thing. Now this speaker sub-assembly gets held in place with two brackets just on the left and right and that's secured with number eight hardware. The 
Raspberry Pi 3 gets mounted vertically, and that's so we can access the USB ports and the SD card from the back, so we don't have to lift the cabinet up to get to it. So the main AC power, I'm using a, just the monitor cable, cut it into two parts, and I'm using a 120 volt switch that's illuminated, so when it's on, the 120 lights up a little light in there, and a standard power supply receptacle. I take a standard outlet and wire into a shallow box, and then the female end that connects to the monitor also goes to that outlet in parallel. So the that switch is controlling anything plugged into the outlet and power going to the monitor. That just gets secured in place with a cover plate as well. And with the new work box, we're just going to wire the plug receptacle to the switch, connect ground straight to the plug receptacle, and just the power for both poles, hot and neutral. And then that gets tucked into this box for safety reasons, since it's 120 volts, those connectors aren't being insulated, so we'll just stick them in a box, hopefully to keep wandering fingers away. Then we can just check our work. And then this sub-assembly for AC power gets mounted into the back. And then we'll plug the monitor cable into the monitor. So that's what it looks like. Now we'll wire everything else. Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you what we just did, which is AC. The outlet goes to the monitor, and that switch controls that. Note that our monitor has an internal 12 volt supply meant for speakers, and we're also going to use an extra 12 volt supply for the Pi and the LED backlight and the fan. We'll use a barrier strip for convenience, and those three switches I already showed you. Amplifier goes to one, and note that our barrier strip and buck converter are on screen, and the buck converter goes to the Raspberry Pi. Another switch gets wired to the 12 volt backlight and we have this other switch that I've already shown you that's going to tr control our fan and the fan is only for removing heat from the arcade which you can control from the front and use if needed. And the volume bot buttons get connected to the amplifier and those are the momentary buttons that we wired to the front as well. So here's everything. And what it looks like, if you're using a monitor that doesn't have an internal 12 volt supply, there is another way you could do this, and this is what it looks like. Note that you need to beef up the 12 volt supply to at least 3 amps for this, and then you can just wire the speaker amplifier to your main line. So not, not complicated, but I do recommend using a separate supply for the amplifier that is isolated from the Raspberry Pi because the Pi likes to generate a lot of noise in the audio, as far as analog audio. The fan, which is optional, this came from a dead ATX power supply. I, that just gets mounted to the rear panel with some nuts and bolts, like so. And that extra tab I glued on the bottom. This is the artwork I made for the control panel on the marquee. Just basic shapes, going with the Neo Geo theme. And I printed it on a big Canon inkjet plotter. Here's what it looks like. And then I'll cut out these graphics and then the marquee gets sandwiched in between two, peaks, two pieces of acrylic. And that gets mounted into the top with bolts and remember that little siding piece that helps push the middle section of the marquee flush against the front because at this length it likes to bow. I've mounted two Sanwa JFL joysticks to the control panel and I've cut out what I need to as far as the control panel graphics and now I'm just going to insert the appropriate colored buttons and fasten them with nuts. Put the tops of the joysticks on and we'll take a break and look at the keyboard encoder. So this is a K device. It's just a programmable USB HID encoder that works great. So it comes in a kit, so I have to solder some things 
Uh, the nice thing about this is the programmable part is removable from where you terminate all your wires. So if you need to change things on the fly, it's cool. Make a bunch of wires and land those into the screw terminals of the Cade hub. And then we're just gonna plug in the appropriate wires, the joysticks and the buttons from that termination point. So this is what it looks like when it's all wired. The keyboard layout or key inputs I'm gonna choose for player one and player two are just something I've picked that kind of works well with MAME. The great thing about this Cade is it also has a hardware shift button. So all your inputs can serve double duty as just like the shift key works on your keyboard. So I'm gonna have the basic playing buttons when you're playing the game. And when you hold down the hardware shift button, we get an, another set of keys that we can perform overall menu functions with the arcade. So this is just a convenience thing and it works really well for like exiting the game, inserting a coin uh, without having to take away buttons that are dedicated for playing. This is the Cade interface. Uh, and this is where you program what key customization you want. This is me just selecting those keys for the shift command. You program that to the encoder and then once it's programmed, it'll reset itself as an HID device and your computer should recognize it. And then you can remove that USB dongle and now plug it into the screw terminal breakout and connect a USB extension in this case. I'll put the control panel in and then that USB extension gets plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Then I'll just add some aluminum standoffs, put the rear panel in and the bottom tab clips into the bottom of the arcade and then two screws fasten in the back to hold the arcade into itself. So don't forget when you do put the control panel in, we have to wire the hardware shift button which is on the front of the cabinet. This is what everything looks like when it's all wired and now we'll test some things out. This arcade could use some flair so that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make some graphics for the side and the front. Here's some B-roll footage of the eBay vinyl cutter that I have. It's nothing fancy, but it definitely gets the job done if you've got no other place to go as far as getting vinyl work done. So I just took some images I had on Inkscape, turned them into vectors, and just printed out the MVS Neo Geo and some SNK logos. You put Transfer tape on the front, pull the vinyl off, and then apply it to the painted surface. I'm just going to lay out where I think I want everything to go. I recommend using like a square, something to make sure your graphics are level. And I'm doing this off camera just because I'm terrible at it. And every time I do it on camera, I get it crooked. So do one side, repeat the other, and that's what it looks like with graphics. Now let's talk about RetroPie. RetroPie is the best for retro emulation on the Raspberry Pi and a discussion. Go to, go to RetroPie's website, download the operating system or image for the Raspberry Pi you have, unzip the image, and then use the uploader Win32 Disk Imager, if you're using Windows, to write the image to your SD card. Once you have that written to the SD card, depending on the class, I recommend like a class 10 SD card for this since the speed will make a difference compared to like a class four. Insert the SD card into the finished arcade cabinet, plug everything in and power on. That's a Pi Power speakers and marquee backlight and fan power, optional of course. It's a bit loud for how much air that power supply power supply fan pulls, but no big deal. All right, so this is what it looks like when everything's configured and turns on. It looks like an arcade cabinet. I'm just demonstrating that it works, if you didn't believe me. So let's look at a two-player game and one that's in MAME. You remember the shift key that the Cade can handle. So now we're just pressing the tab button using shift 
and going into MAME's configuration to set all the player controls for player one and player two. This is a convenient feature if of this keyboard emulator. So you can have dedicated arcade controls and then they all double as function keys or whatever you want else them to be on your keyboard. You can see here, all the keys are working just as intended. So how do we move files over to the SD card? The easiest way is to install Pixel, which we're gonna do using the built-in RetroPie scripts. It takes a little bit, but once you've got it installed, you can just quit Emulation Station by pressing F4, type in sudo start x, and it will load the Pixel desktop environment. And that way you can now navigate using a GUI file system, drag and drop files from your flash drive that you can plug in via USB, and you can also easily edit any configurations for RetroPie and Emulation Station. And it's really nice just to have a non-terminal environment to do this. So we're looking at the main RetroArch config file where you can edit controls, video options, and so on. And then you can do specific configuration files for each emulator. So these ones will take precedent over the overall configuration file, and this is where they're located. Your other option is to just SSH through network or Wi-Fi. And to do this, we're gonna use the built-in install script or menu in RetroPie. Enable Wi-Fi if you're using a Pi 3. And then enter your credentials for that Wi-Fi. Now you have to go to Raspberry Pi config, interfacing options, and enable SSH. Now on your computer, we're gonna use using WinSCP to log into the Pi. I haven't changed the credentials. And once you successfully log in, so your Pi has to be on and connected to your network, you can just drag and drop files to the Pi. This is pretty fast depending on the resources that your router can handle. And you can also delete files from here as well. So this is, this is also really convenient. Once you've moved those files over, just restart emulation station and then they'll show up. Your last option is using RetroPie's built-in file manager. This is a little cumbersome, but at least there's something there. So on RetroPie, since like version 3.8, this has been a built-in system. It's just a standard Linux GUI where you can look at a source like the a USB flash drive and then use function keys to do copy delete commands. And you'll notice that the reason why I made some certain function keys available on my layout like this, if I just wanna quickly delete something on the arcade, I can do that. So there's lots of lots of details about RetroPie. I'm not gonna answer any others that I'm covered. And if you have questions, don't ask them in these YouTube comics, go to RetroPie's website, look at their forums and read it. All the answers are there. Do yourself a favor and take the initiative to solve your own questions before asking here because the RetroPie resource is such a good place to get answers. That about wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope it was informative in at least some caliber. So whether it is designing your arcade, putting it together, painting it, how to do graphics, or how to wire the thing, or even getting familiar with the Raspberry Pi. I try to cover everything so you get an idea that it's not complicated when you separate it into each individual steps. I do get the question asked a lot, how do I get started? What do I do for this and this? And my best advice is if this is something you want to build, you want to build your own arcade, don't wait to learn, just get started. So you can, all you need is like a jigsaw and some simple tools and the sooner you get started, the faster you'll be sharpening your skills and eventually getting to the point where you satisfy the most important critic, which is you. If you're happy with what you've built, then what else would matter? So I encourage you guys to just get started, take a crack at this, and scour the internet for resources because they're all there. So thank you for watching and take care, everyone.
I know I look like that dude from Vsauce, but consider this. Maybe he looks like me.